My name is Sarah. I'm 29 years old, and I live with a rare and invisible disease. My life is very different now than it was six and a half years ago. When I was 23, I had been living with an undiagnosed, debilitating disease for 10 years, and I didn't even know it. I'm here today to give you the perspective of what it was like to live with an undiagnosed disease, and now today, what it is like for me living with this rare and invisible disease. As a teenager, I was going through a lot. I struggled with anxiety and OCD. My parents were going through a divorce. I don't like to consider myself a negative person, but even as a teenager, I was a realist. Have you ever met the kind of person that seriously likes to complain? Like they honestly don't want a solution to their problems. They just want to tell you how awful their life is. Mm, that was me. <laughs> I was so bitter from these different life circumstances. I just felt like it was always getting worse and I would snap and lash out at anyone who slightly irritated me. In junior high and high school, I started receiving accommodations for my learning disability and reading. And I also started having more medical issues. I was treated for thyroid problems, menstrual problems, allergies, random skin rashes, a bulging disc in my lower back, and of course my anxiety. Even then, my friends would lovingly make fun of me and call me grandma because I had a pillbox and took more medication than anyone else my age. <laughs> In college, my physical health got even worse, but I didn't think anything was seriously wrong with me. By then, I was not regularly exercising or eating healthy, so I thought it was my own fault. I really thought people just felt like that if they were out of shape. I started losing more and more weight and sleeping more and more. My lymph nodes were enlarged. I would lose my breath with minimal physical activity. I was constantly dehydrated and lightheaded with low blood pressure and low blood sugar. My skin complexion got darker. I didn't even produce typical body fluids like sweat or typical body hair growth. I suffered abdominal pain and UTIs, yeast infections. I struggled to urinate, but also couldn't control my bladder when I did have to go. I was always constipated and even had hemorrhoids at some points. I had a loss of appetite and often vomited. When I did eat, I craved salty foods. Doctors diagnosed me with anemia, GERD, and continued to change my thyroid medication dosage. They even feared I had lymphoma and did a minor surgery to find out that, that was not the case. They also considered doing thyroid surgery on me, but in the end they did not. Nothing the doctors and specialists suggested made me any better. When I was 22 years old, I suffered from some seizures. They thought this was due to dehydration, but still no one could figure out what the underlying root of all these problems were. I remember after going grocery shopping and carrying a couple bags of groceries up the stairs to my apartment, I would actually have to lay down and take a nap. I was always so exhausted. And because I wasn't producing any sweat or body odor, I seriously probably only bathed like once a week because that simple task took so much energy. And I definitely couldn't shower because standing was too painful and took way too much energy. But one good thing that happened in college was that I actually got over my fear of elevators because I was physically incapable of climbing the stairs. I was absolutely struggling in my everyday life as a college student. Looking back at these pictures, I feel like you can see the struggle in my eyes and the forced smile on my face. My friends and family didn't know what was wrong with me. Some people thought I was a spoiled, lazy brat. Strangers thought I was possibly on drugs, suffering from an eating disorder, or in some sort of abusive relationship, suffering mentally and emotionally, leading to a physical decline. And while these are all equally serious and real struggles that people go through, this is not what was going on with me. It seems impossible looking back now that I didn't realize I was sick, but when the changes are slowly happening to you every day, it's hard to notice anything is wrong. 
But because I was in college, three hours away, and my mom wasn't with me every day, she saw the changes and she was persistent that I find help. By the age of 23, I was sleeping 15 to 18 hours a day and ate very little. I looked so thin and sick, people would often ask me if I needed to go to the emergency room. And while there were a few occasions I went to the ER, most of the time I would respond, no, I feel like this all the time. Please don't take me to the emergency room. Because when I did go to the ER, they gave me IV fluids because I was dehydrated and did all the typical lab work, but because all that typical lab work came back normal, they would send me on my way. My mom was understandably frustrated and scared and thought I was going to die before they figured out what was wrong with me. Thankfully, due to her persistence, I had my first integrative health doctor's appointment in August of 2015. This appointment was three hours long. She talked to me and my mom extensively about my symptoms and my life literally from conception. She had me stand for five minutes and after standing, my blood pressure was 60 over 40 and my heart rate was 140 beats per minute. My body was working really hard just to stand there. Within that first appointment, this integrative health doctor knew what was wrong with me. She said, I think you have Addison's disease, and later tests confirmed she was correct. Approximately one in 100,000 people in the United States have Addison's disease. This is a hormonal disorder where the adrenal gland does not produce enough cortisol. This disease cannot be cured, but it can be treated with medicine. And after daily treatment, even after just two months, I was a completely different person. I had gained about 20 pounds, and I had more energy than I knew what to do with. I know a lot of people are scared to go to the doctor, but I have a hard time wrapping my head around this because my doctor's diagnosis wasn't a death sentence for me. Being accurately diagnosed gave me the opportunity for treatment, which gave me life again. Many months later, we also discovered I have Lyme disease, and we don't know how long I've had that disease either. It's sometimes very difficult to figure out which symptoms are related to which disease. My integrative health doctor and I really try to figure out the root of my problems and not just treat the symptoms because treating the symptoms had gotten me nowhere for 10 years. Which leads me to my life today, six and a half years later. So you might think I take some medicine and I'm all better, right? Mm, not exactly. My life is a little more complicated than just taking some medication and going on about my day. I am a semi-unpredictable medical science experiment every day. But you can't tell that just by looking at me because my diseases are invisible. I have to be very in tune with my body. I have to record how I'm feeling every day and help determine my future treatment and medical doses. So one thing with Addison's disease is that my immune system is not as strong as other people's. If I get sick, I have to take extra cortisol because my adrenal gland does not do that properly. I have to carry around an emergency injection of cortisol just in case I get severely injured or ill. If you get injured, your adrenal gland will go into action and give you a burst of cortisol. If I get injured, my adrenal gland will just be like, Sorry, that's unfortunate, but I retired and that is not my problem. That's not my job. <laughs> so I have to take cortisol artificially. But that's just one of the medications I take. I take medicine five times a day. I take about 30 pills with breakfast, a few pills at lunch, and a few pills at 4 p.m. I take about 15 pills with dinner, and then a couple before I go to bed. Obviously, I have to eat large meals at consistent times every day so that I can take all this medication. Eating healthy and drinking lots of water is part of my health plan, but I do the best I can. I'm still human. <laughs> but it is kind of impressive how much I eat. There are times I feel like a 12-year-old going through puberty. People will see me eat this ridiculous amount of food, 
And then they'll say, you're so lucky. How do you stay so thin? And I try to stay happy and positive most of the time, but my true self is thinking, well, I take steroids three times a day because I have Addison's disease, which gives me acne and makes me my face swell up. So, but I guess I do stay pretty thin. Would you like to trade me problems? Now, I'm not saying that my problems are any worse than anybody else's problems. Uh, I really am not looking for pity. I love my life and I'm grateful for everything I do have. But sometimes that bitter high school Sarah will sneak in my mind and make a sarcastic remark. But back to the food. I'm pretty sure I'm known as the human dis garbage disposal at work. My coworkers will say to each other, oh, are you not gonna eat that? Take it to Sarah, she'll eat it. And they're not wrong. Uh, this is actually very helpful to me uh, because with Addison's disease, every little thing I do takes energy and I have less energy than most 29 year olds when I get up in the morning. Some days I have more energy than others. I save my energy by choosing my priorities and accepting help from others. I choose to accept help, accept help from friends and family. They help me clean my house, mow my yard. The example I just gave is that I choose not to cook. I eat a lot of leftovers, I eat frozen meals because I don't enjoy cooking. So I choose not to waste my energy on that. I choose to eat off of disposable plates and use compostable utensils so I don't really have as many dishes to do. I mentioned that I do work and my job is something that takes up a lot of my energy. I consider myself blessed to still be able to have a full-time job. A lot of people with a rare disease or an invisible disability can't work. And there's a strong possibility that that's gonna be me someday. But for now, with a few accommodations and understanding coworkers, I'm able to work my full-time job and for that, I'm very thankful. Now, I might be able to do more things at home if I had a different type of job, but I choose my very active job as a toddler teacher because it gives me fulfillment, purpose, and joy. And that's my choice. I get to choose my priorities. I also choose which social events I'm going to participate in on the weekends because I don't have the energy to do it all and I'm a little socially awkward, and it gives me anxiety. <laughs> if I take a vacation from work, I have to take an extra day off before and after the vacation just to prepare and recover from a relaxing vacation. <laughs> Does anybody else do that? <laughs> but seriously, if I do too much, I can literally end up in the emergency room, which can be a very frustrating experience, even with an accurate diagnosis, because Addison's disease is so rare. You see, apparently an Addisonian crisis looks similar to a person overdosing on drugs. So the ER doctors have to ask whoever I'm with all these questions and consult my integrative health specialist before they'll give me the medicine I need, which only elongates my pain and suffering in the ER. It's hard to balance trying to live my life to the fullest and also allowing my body to relax so I don't end up in the hospital. If I can be my bitter high school Sarah self for just a moment, I would probably tell you this. To be honest, sometimes life just sucks. It's true. But your attitude is everything. I believe going through the experience of having a rare and invisible disease has actually made me a better person. And I wanna share with you what I've learned through the process. First, you have to find your people. I'm so thankful for the people that help me with my housework and yard work and bring me food. Acknowledge who those people are in your life and appreciate them. I'm so thankful for my mom's persistence and not giving up on me when most other people had. Keep people close to you that will fight for you when you're too weak to fight for yourself. And then, when you are strong enough to fight for yourself, keep being persistent. Never give up, even when things get hard. 
my favorite thing I've learned is to prioritize my passions. Choose what brings you joy, and not just short-term temporary joy, but long-term real-life joy. Don't worry about what random people might think. The hardest thing I've had to learn is probably to stay positive. Every single thought and action creates a ripple effect on the universe. So choose to make those thoughts and actions positive. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. Remember to pause and consider other people's perspectives. Everyone you meet is fighting a battle you know nothing about. So instead of being judgmental, choose to be kind.